Well, thanks for clicking on to part two of the 51st edition of the Global Weather and Climate Report. I thought there was still too much to uh, discuss, so I'm doing part two actually today. And this is the month of July off, um, off the CDAS data, by the way. Also, so central portions of North America is cold than average, very warm northwest, very warm east, as you can see here. And of course, we've had the uh, ongoing heat wave across the southwest desert region. Uh, sections of Russia below average versus above uh, Mon uh, Mongolia, uh, particularly eastern side of Mongolia, below average. Northern India, or most of India, in fact, average to slightly below average. Uh, or I suppose it's a 50-50 really for India in terms of temperature anomaly. Warmer than average across the north of Africa, of course, we are in height of summer, so no surprise here really. Uh, parts of equatorial and South Africa below average. Western Australia cold than average versus the east. And we've got some very warm conditions across pretty much all of South America with the exceptions of the southern tip. Uh, looking at Europe here specifically, and like I've said, below average across the UK and Ireland. It will be a below average July overall. Much of Scandinavia below average. Western Russia below average and Central and Southern Europe, as per my forecast for July, um, is warmer than average here. The QBO, by the way, is going easterly, and that could be very interesting and significant as we go into the winter season. Like I said before, do check out the Friday uh, European Outlook because I spoke about that, and other aspects that I'm looking at with regards to the upcoming winter season. Indian Ocean Dipole, by the way, is neutral at the moment as discussed in the in edition one of the uh, today's global weather report this is the current temperatures across uh, the european continent um, no great shakes across the uk slightly warm er um, and closer to the average across southeastern portions of england today but the uh, further west and north temperatures are subpar uh, temperatures um, average to below average across much of northern europe warmer than average across central areas and um, a fair wee bit warmer than average across particularly Italy, Greece, Turkey in particular. That is where the focus of heat wave conditions is now centred upon. Even Spain is closer to average for the time of the year. And uh, if you look closely at uh, Greece and Turkey, we do have a very, very hot day indeed. Uh, temperatures uh, of 43, 44 Celsius. It looks like parts of Turkey, Western Turkey in particular, close to 48 celsius so that is right up there with some very very hot conditions indeed um so this is according to um extreme temperatures around the world we had temperatures during the overnight period in greece and turkey as high as 35 to 37 celsius so most of the overnight period temperatures 35 to 37 degrees celsius very 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 uncomfortable er uh, during the dark hours of night, minimum temperatures of 34.5 and 33.6 Celsius in parts of Greece and Turkey here. So uh, even temperatures this morning up as high as 44 Celsius at 11 a.m. According to Maximiliano, very, very warm conditions. Of course, it is the winter season down in Argentina. We're having temperatures above 35 Celsius at 1200 meters above sea level here tropical night temperatures uh, as high as 28 celsius so remarkably warm temperatures here for the winter season down in argentina uh, and it looks as if um, the arpas our pass confirms that uh, a temperature of 47.7 celsius was recorded yesterday i believe this was actually the day before and it's the second hottest day in Sardinia history and second highest temperature in Italy for the month of July after 48 degrees Celsius rec recorded back in July of 2009. So uh, very, very close to all-time records down in parts of Greece, Turkey um, in recent days, and of course Italy. Uh, very, very hot overnight temperatures in parts of Spain as well where we had uh, Malaga, an overnight minimum of 31.6 Celsius, Mercia 26.8. These are either records or ties of the record. Even in Palma de Mallorca, 27.5 Celsius for an overnight low. So very uncomfortable conditions here, of course. 
helped by the fact that you've got 27 to 29 Celsius water temperatures that is increasing the humidity and keeping those overnight temperatures uh, firmly above average, if not near record breaking. Warm night, Albuquerque, uh, an altitude of uh, you know nearly five and a half thousand feet above sea level, an overnight minimum. Uh, I think this ties the warmest night on record of 79 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty impressive. Mexicali and the Baja of California, a temperature of 51.1 Celsius was achieved at Mexicali. So that's only 0.9 Celsius below the Mexican record set back in July 1995. Point Barrow, all the way up on the Arctic coast, had a temperature on Wednesday back last week of uh, 23.3 for a high and 11.7 Celsius for a minimum making the July. The daily average is 17.5. This ties the July 13th, 1993 record for this location right on the arctic coast of alaska so very very warm conditions here but overall alaska has been slightly below average for much of 2023 in fact this is an interesting one mount sonblick in austria at an elevation of 3109 meters above sea level looks if it tem uh, it's the highest observatory in the world and active since 1886. On July the 11th, it rose to 15.7 Celsius, the highest temperature on record for the, this location. Uh, so that's quite impressive stuff, actually. And today, the snow depth was only 46 centimeters. Second year in a row, it's heading towards an exceptionally early melt. This, of course, in recorded history. I want to emphasize that point. And uh, yep, today um, marks my 14th year on twitter which um is interesting or not to you uh and we'll continue to look and see here what we've got with regards to some very chilly nights by the way especially in the car bridge area um our friend lee at highland weather uh, said there that they were recorded an overnight frost last night or the night before and this would mark um you know if we have a, a sub freezing night in august it would be 12 uh, months uh, so every month of the year recording a temperature below the freezing mark which is quite interesting stuff actually this was a tornado recorded uh, at Dungeness coast on the English coast uh, recent days uh, we also had some very very unusual cold actually the coldest in a couple of decades for parts of New South Wales so New South Wales not New South Wales wow yeah that actually tickled me myself there saying that uh, a temperature of minus 10.8 Celsius was achieved. So this is Australia's lowest temperature of the year so far. And I believe it's the coldest temperature to, up until 2019. So not a few decades like I've seen in, in another source. But certainly some in, impressive cold nonetheless in parts of Australia in recent times. Unusual cold actually in parts of Russia. Uh, a string of three days where the temperature barely got above the freezing mark, which is quite interesting. Very large hail fall in parts of Central Europe. As explained to you in the last video there, uh, the collision between Atlantic Air versus hot uh, continental air. So, uh, yeah, I think I've covered pretty much that. And, uh, you know, upcoming five days, let's end uh, the, the part two of the 51st edition by looking at the temperature anomalies for the upcoming five-day period across Europe. And as you can see here, more than half of the continent below average for the next five days. And this will kind of take us to the end of the month on a rather chilly note indeed. This is the 11th to 15th day, with, which is the period between the 2nd and the 7th of August. Not a warm start to the month of August either. And like I say, stay tuned. This upcoming week, I will have the August outlook released on marfolandweather.com. I will also be talking about it in quite a bit of detail here on YouTube also. So stay tuned to that. And if you haven't already done so, do hit that subscribe button. I do encourage you to do that. So, yeah, a very, very cool July overall. A very wet July compared to average. And a stark contrast, of course, to July 2023. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. Back again next week with the 52nd edition of the Global Weather and Climate Report. And, of course, we've got a full week of Lots of content, exciting stuff. So keep it right here on YouTube. And I'll see you again tomorrow with more. Bye for now.